For the last time, I don't know what has become of Harley Warren. Although I think, almost hope, he is in a peaceful oblivion. If there be anywhere so blessed a thing. You were with Mr. Warren the night he disappeared. You're his only known associate. Or we just saw it together tonight on the Gainesville Pike. You are the only one who can tell us what happened to it's him. It's true! I have for five years been his closest friend and a partial sharer of his terrible researches into the unknown. I will not deny Although my memory is uncertain and indistinct that this witness of yours may have seen us together, as you say, at half past eleven on the Gaines Mill Pike on that awful night. But of what followed, and of the reason I was found alone and dazed on the edge of the swamp, I must insist I know nothing save what I have told you over and over again. There is nowhere in the swamp that remotely resembles the place you describe. I know nothing beyond what I saw! Vision or nightmare it may have been. Vision or nightmare, I fervently hope it was. Yet it is all that my mind retains of what took place in those shocking hours after we left the sight of men. And why Harley Warren did not return, he or his shade, or some nameless thing I cannot describe, alone can tell. What was the nature of your studies into the occult, and what did you hope to find in this swamp? Well, as I've said before, the weird studies of Harley Warren were well known to me, and to some extent shared by me. Now, of his vast collection of strange, rare books on forbidden subjects, I have read all that are written in languages of which I am the master. As for the nature of our studies, must I say again that I no longer retain full comprehension it seems to me rather merciful that I do not, for they were terrible studies, which I conducted more out of a reluctant fascination than an actual inclination. Warren always dominated me. Sometimes I feared him. But I do not fear him now, for I suspect he has known horrors beyond my ken. Now I fear for him. What were you after in the supposed graveyard? Once more, I say, I have no clear idea of our object on that night. But certainly it had much to do with something in the book that Warren carried with him, that strange volume in undecipherable characters that came to him from India a month before. Your witness says he saw us together at half past 11 on the Gainesville Pike, headed for Big Cypress Swamp. This is probably true, but I have no clear memory of it. The picture seared into my soul is of one scene only, and the hour must have been long after midnight, because a waning crescent moon was high in the vaporous heavens. The place was an ancient cemetery. So ancient that I trembled at the manifold signs of immemorial years. My first vivid impressions of my own presence in this terrible necropolis concern the act of pausing with Warren before a certain half obliterated sepulchre and of throwing down some burdens which we seem to have been carrying. Service to a life following. 
So you expect me to sit up here and wait for you to return? Yes. No. I tell you, I'm coming with you. Fine. Oh. Oh, but don't stop. If you refuse to give reason, then I shall not leave. And you cannot go alone. For I have the key to this venture. Very well. But this is against my better judgment. silence of that hoary and deserted city of the dead, my mind began to conceive the most ghastly fantasies and illusions, and the hideous shrines and monoliths seemed to assume a hideous personality, a half-sentience. I constantly consulted my watch by the light of my electric lantern, and listened with feverish anxiety at the receiver of the telephone, but for more than a quarter of an hour I heard nothing. Uh, Carter, you can see what I'm seeing. It's terrible, monstrous, unbelievable. Warren, what is it? What is it? I can't tell you, Carter. It's too ugly beyond thoughts. I cannot tell you. No one could know the you. God, I never dreamed of this. What is it? Answer me, Warren! Carter, the love of God, put the slab back and get out of this if you can. Quick, there's nothing else to make for the outside. It's your only chance. Do as I say, and don't ask me to explain. I heard, yet was only able to repeat my frantic questions. Around me were the tombs and the shadows and the darkness. Below me, some peril beyond the radius of the human imagination. But my friend was in greater danger than I. And through my fear, I felt a vague resentment that he deemed me capable of deserting him under such circumstances. Beat it. For God's sake, put the slab back and beat it, Carter. Warren, freeze up. I'm coming down! Don't! You can't understand, it's too late. And my own fault. Put the slab back and run! If nothing else, you can do it. Quick, before it's too late! I tried not to heed him. I tried to break through the paralysis which held me, and to fulfill my vow to rush down to his aid. But his next whisper found me still held inert in the chains of stark horror. Hunter, hurry! You must go. I don't want them to the slab. It'll be over now. It'll make it harder. Cover up those down steps and run for your life. Give some time. So look harder. Oh, see you again. Curse these hellish things. Legions. said that eons seemed to elapse after Warren shrieked forth his last despairing warning, and that only my own cries now broke the hideous silence. Well, after a while, there was a further clicking in the receiver, and again I strained my ears to listen. I cried out, Warren, are you there? And in response, I heard the thing which has cast this cloud over my mind. Do not try, sir, to account for this thing, this voice. Nor can I venture to describe it in detail, since the first word took away my consciousness, creating a mental blank lasting to the time of my awakening in the hospital. Shall I say that the voice was deep, hollow, gelatinous, remote, unearthly, 
Inhuman. Disembodied. What shall I say? It was the end of my experience, and it's the end of my story. 